فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إنما جزاء الذين يحاربون الله ورسوله ويسعون في الأرض فسادا أن يقتلوا أو يصلبوا أو تقطع أيديهم وأرجلهم أو تقطع أيديهم وأرجلهم من خلاف أو ينفوا من الأرض ذلك لهم خزي في الدنيا ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم إلا الذين تابوا من قبل أن تقدروا عليهم فاعلموا أن الله غفور رحيم صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين So in the previous ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, told us about the story of Habil and Qabil While telling that story Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encouraged people to have taqwa And this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِنَّمَا جَزَاءُ الَّذِينَ يُحَارِبُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ So this refers to <coughs> punishments that are mentioned in Islam before we do the explanation of this ayah, there's a brief discussion that needs to be made about some terminology. It's important to understand that Islamic law has given, has prescribed punishments for only some crimes. Most of the crimes are, the punishment for those crimes is left upon the existing Qadi. Who's a Qadi? Islamic judge. Judge of an Islamic court. So that Qadi is required to be well versed with Islamic knowledge and the Quran and Hadith and the way of the Sahaba. So for most crimes, except for those that are mentioned, whose punishment is clearly established from the Quran and Sunnah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left the decision of how much punishment is to be decreed upon the current existing Qadi of that time. But there's some punishments, there's some crimes whose punishment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly mentioned in the Quran. Now, out of those crimes, so crimes are generally of two kinds. One are crimes against human beings, in which the right of a human being is severed. Hukuk al ibad are, uh, you know, transgressed upon. Another kind of crime is where the rights of Allah are not fulfilled. Hukuk Allah are not fulfilled. If the right of a human being is not fulfilled, because it is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill the rights of a human being, therefore every right against every crime against humanity is also a crime against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in some crimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given more weightage to the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other crimes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given more weightage to the, uh, to the right of human beings. So the rights in which al- the, the crimes which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called crimes against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are five well-known, well-established from the Quran and the action of the Sahaba. They are theft, robbery, adultery or fornication, false accusation of adultery or fornication uh, and alcohol, drinking alcohol. So the first four are established from the Quran, the punishment is established from the Quran. The punishment of the fifth one, drinking alcohol, is established from a consensus or ijma of the Sahaba. So these are crimes against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these, the punishments of these crimes are clearly mentioned and these are called hudud, hudud, the plural of had. These laws and these punishments cannot be changed by any human being or any government. They are, they have been decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will be executed exactly as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed. There can be no change depending on time or situation in these laws. So hudud, punishments of these five crimes are well established. They cannot be changed. The second category of crimes is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given more weightage to the rights of a human being. That category is called Qisas. Qisas. What is Qisas? When damage has been done to the life or body of a human being. 
then that human being is given an equal right to take revenge. If life has been lost, then the relatives or the descendants will are, are allowed to take the life of the killer. If there has been bodily injury, then that person who has been injured is given full right to execute that exact equal amount of injury upon the one who inflicted that injury. So this is Qisas. The third kind is the kind that I was talking, ab ab talking about which under which come most crimes and those are Tazirat. Tazirat. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given principles but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not defined exact punishment. The exact punishment and the way it will be executed is to be determined by the Islamic judge of that time. Now, in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said <coughs> إِنَّمَا جَزَاءُ الَّذِينَ يُحَارِبُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهَ The punishment for those who fight against Allah and His Messenger. So while the words are harb or yuharibun, it basically means that these people, harb basically means they fight. The consensus of Mufassirin is that this means that those people who harb, one meaning of harb also comes as taking something away. So the meaning of harb here or yuharibun is that they take the peace away from people. That peace which is allocated or allotted to people, given to people by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and executed by the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these crimes that take away the peace of the community, they are considered harb against Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, war against or fight against Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly mentioning the punishment وَيَسْعَوْنَ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَسَادًا And they, uh, they try to create disorder on earth. أَنْ يُقَتَّلُوا So these four punishments. أَنْ يُقَتَّلُوا Either they are killed. So there is no punishment for them except that they are killed. أَوْ يُصَلَّبُوا Or be crucified. أَوْ تُقَطَّعَ أَيْدِيهِمْ Or their hands and وَأَرْجُلُهُمْ And their legs be cut off min khilaf from opposite sides, from different sides. So when somebody commits a theft, their right hand is cut off and their left leg is cut off. Aw yunfaw min al ard or they are banished from land. Dalikalahum this basically according to the fatwa of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anh, this banishment means prison, imprisonment. And this is the fatwa of Imam Hanifa Rahimallah as well, that they are imprisoned. So these are different stages of crime, different levels of crime and these punishments are to be executed, inshallah we'll explain. dunya. These punishments are their punishment only in this world. So even when this punishment is executed, وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ The عذاب, the punishment, the punishment of the akhirah remains. So in, the, in this world they will be punished and it will be, this is a dishonor, disgrace for them in this world. But the punishment in the hereafter remains. So if somebody kills someone unjustly or plunders a land and they are given this punishment in this world, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still remains unless that they make tawbah. If they make tawbah, then the punishment of the akhirah is taken away, but the punishment of this dunya is not taken away. So if somebody, na'uzu billah, plunders or kills someone and then makes tawbah, then they will be punished in this dunya no matter how loudly and how boldly and how openly and how sincerely they commit tawbah. But because of that tawbah, because of that repentance, their punishment in the hereafter will be lifted off. How much time? Eight minutes? Okay. So these are the four stages. أَن يُقَتَّلُوا أَوْ يُصَلَّبُوا أَوْ تُقَطَّعَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَأَرْجُلُهُمْ مِنْ خِلَافٍ أَوْ يُنْفَوْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ The lightest one is imprisonment. Imprisonment. That is for someone who is planning a theft or plundering. So one thing should be remembered. It's not about petty thefts. It's about planned burglary. Planned robbery and it is armed robbery that a group of people plan to commit to take away the peace. So th because this is this refers to taking away a little theft here and there, petty thefts, they do not disrupt the peace of the overall peace of the land. So if there is a group of people who are committing armed robberies and take this, this, these are the punishments mentioned for those people. The lightest one is imprisonment when they are not, they have made a plan, they have not been able to execute it, but they are caught before that. They are caught before that. Then they will be imprisoned. They will not be killed, their hands will not be cut off, their feet will not be cut off. 
they or they will not be crucified they will be only imprisoned if a person before planning and before being caught before being arrested a person or a group they only planned it but they have not been caught they only before before even being arrested they made tawbah to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then the fatwa is that they will not be caught there will be no punishment for them and this happened in the time of sahaba said ali radiyallahu an and pious predecessors that a person took the you know tried to adopt the life of burglary and this and that but they came back so they were their tawbah was accepted before being arrested if someone is arrested and then they make tawbah then they will be still be imprisoned because their tawbah is not uh, they will not be left out in the open to commit further crimes now the other punishment is the one in which the severe the most severe one is that they plunder so they also took the wealth and they also took the life of the owner of that property that mean that is the most severe punishment is for them there they will be they will be killed they will be killed this is a, inshallah we'll continue this discussion, this discussion tomorrow inshallah in detail uh, these four levels of punishment and then there is one exception and then there is some inshallah we'll do this tomorrow complete this tomorrow because we start that in detail today we'll take a lot of time so we'll do it tomorrow alhamdulillah rabbil alamin salatu wassalamu ala sayyidil mursalin rabbana zalamna anfusana wa lam tawfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna minal khasirin rabbi ighfir warham wa anta khayrul rahimin allahumma ij'alna min ahli alquran alladhi ahluka wa khassatuk sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqihi sayyidina wa mawlana muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin